so I got cut off at the end there. Um, what I was saying was that uh, when it comes to causality, we've we've returned again to, uh, or we, we should return again to philosophy rather than a naive uh, naturalism, um, which would you know take the world as we experience it for granted as the evidence of this abstract theoretical knowledge um, about the real causes underlying that experience. Um, because you know this is the contradiction in, in um, objective materialistic science. It, it empirically or um, experientially investigates and finds evidence for um, a theory which is supposed to provide um, a causal deterministic explanation for our own ability to experience. Um, and so it's almost as though when science becomes fragmented, as I was describing, when it loses contact with its philosophical meaning, with its basis in what Husserl calls the life world, the world of our immediate experience as persons, uh, when a science loses touch with that, it becomes uh, a mere technique for manipulating and predicting um, a certain um, slice of the natural world. And it no longer, it no longer explains, it no longer um, is meaningful in any way for human life. For, for our actual existence on planet Earth among one another. Um, and, you know, Husserl wants science to remain relevant to that life world, to our world as human persons. Um, and he finds it an absurdity that a science could say or assume from the beginning that everything is basically mechanism. Um, and then based on that, uh, assumption um, eradicate its own ability uh, to know it were true consciously um, you know because if consciousness is capable of knowledge um, if consciousness is capable of doing science then whatever consciousness is it must not be mechanical it must be capable of knowing mechanism um, and, you know, of course, Descartes recognized this, and in many ways, Husserl is um, taking Descartes further. Um, De Husserl wants us to follow him in an even more radical meditation on the nature of our inner experience. He wants us to perform um, a transcendental reduction. And this is a different kind of reductionism than the normal materialistic kind. This is reductionism in the sense of um, you know, boiling off the various um, layers of experience until we return to the core, to the essence of experience, which Husserl calls the transcendental ego. Um, and this is basically the, the thinker, the I, um, the, and it's not an object, it's not a thing. It's that which continually allows thinking to arise, that, itself can never be thought or pinned down or simply located. <clears throat> um, that is the transcendental ego. Um, and everything else that we experience is a phenomenon for this transcendental ego. And, you know, Husserl says that recognizing this, this I, this, um, spiritual essence at the core of your humanity is an achievement. It's not simply given. What's given is the life world, um, you know, where we interact with one another meaningfully, taking, um, you know, the world itself for granted. Um, but when we perform this transcendental reduction, we recognize the world for the first time and say, wow, there's something here something going on, um, and it seems organized and ordered and lawful, and so we want to begin to do science. Um, but for Husserl, recognizing um, the sense in which the world is an ordered, complex whole 
that it, it is somehow all related in a, a reasonable, um, understandable way. Um, realizing that is also of necessity pointing you to your own um, self-consciousness of that world. When you become aware of the world for the first time as a world, rather than simply just the world that's given already to you uh, naively, when you recognize it as a world, a possible world, you've already recognized yourself. You've taken a step out as this transcendental ego uh, and seen the world as a possibility, as something which has arisen um, and has shown itself, but could have shown itself otherwise. Um, and so that, for Husserl, would be the basis of um, our, our scientific investigation. We begin um, phenomenologically, without any assumptions about um, the nature of the world of experience as it is given to us immediately. Um, we simply recognize that it is given immediately, and then we um, explore it. Now, we, we can explore it by doing empirical ex experiments on the brain, um, but we do so without assuming from the beginning that um, the brain will be, in and of itself, entirely explanatory of consciousness. Because consciousness is also doing this investigation. Um, consciousness is that urge responsible for the need to know that initiated the experimentation in the first place. Uh, consciousness is that which would understand the results of experimentation. And so, you know, when we take a phenomenological perspective on science and on neuroscience, consciousness becomes um, irreducible to the brain. It's certainly related to the brain. Um, but the assumption that it is reducible would be, would make an absurdity of our own given immediate experience. Um, one more thing I want to mention um, about uh, something Koch was discussing was this theory of this, it's really an Anglo-American um, philosophical approach to the nature of consciousness, which is that it's made of qualia, basically. And uh, qualia, um, they're like bare universals. Um, shades of, of redness, um, you know, shapes, um, general um, categories, representations, um, and it, this is basically an atomic theory of consciousness modeled after the atomic theory of the physical world, um, that it's made up of parts and components. When, you know, I think we, we shouldn't assume the consciousness is uh, made up of parts like this, qualia. Um, I think that is a theory we come up with, um, but that in our given experience, what comes first is the sense of a meaningful whole of the world as ordered, as, you know, everything in its place. And the meaning of any particular thing always comes from the context in which it arises. So we always know more than um, a qual. Uh, the qual is always in context. It's always um, together uh, with some meaningful whole. Uh, and then certainly after we can analyze it and theorize about it and break up the whole into uh, parts. But that's not how experience is given to us. So, you know, I wouldn't want to, I would want to begin with a more uh, gestalt view of consciousness rather than with um, this view that it's made up of qualia, that it's essentially representational in that way. Um, you know, thoughts and ideas and images are always part of um, a larger organism, They're like organs in the larger idea which is experienced.